And that's the 40 seconds. Hey, it's bloody yellow. Who'd have thought it? As you know, we have a constant battle against rust. Occasionally we win a few of the minor skirmishes. Up to now, I've tended to paint things, nuts and bolts and such like, or buy new. I've decided to up our game a little bit, and when we've won one of these skirmishes with rust on fasteners, we're gonna have a go at plating. Having researched plating, it appears that zinc nickel, as a mixture, is the best one for anti-corrosion. So we're not really looking for the finish, so to speak, but for the anti-corrosion properties. Uh, we've bought our kit, we've got ourselves some deionized water, we're gonna give it a go. We're a bit strapped for space in the workshops, as you can see we're always tripping over something. Luckily, we've got the dungeon in our house, although it is the loft. Uh, got plenty of room, we've got some nice little trolleys to use. We're going to set up the plating kit in here and hopefully leave it undisturbed, apart from when we come up to do a little bit of plating. That's the plan. Let's see how it works out. So there's a number of different containers of chemicals we need to sort out. The most important one seems to be, they call it the electrolyte. Now we're doing zinc and nickel and it tells us with the kit to start off with eight litres of warm water which we've warmed up with the heater, to use the, all of the ammonium chloride, all of the nickel chloride, all of the zinc chloride which is a lot of powders I'm wondering how we'll get these all to dissolve and then you add something called xylite to it so we're going to put all this together we've put the pump in that agitates it and we've got a nice big stick somewhere to give it a good stirring actually went in a lot easier than I expected. Lovely green coloured stuff. It now says top it up to 10 litres with a, another um, 2 litres of deionized water. When you've done that you need to mark it so that you know how much you've got because it will evaporate even in a cold dungeon like this and when it has evaporated you can add a bit more deionized water to bring it back up to the level. Thank <laughs> you. 
that's a week gone by we set up and we were about to get going and realized that actually to make the additional cleaner and the activator and the passivate we couldn't squeeze out of our 25 litres of deionized water so we ordered another 50 litres so we got another two containers while we were waiting we thought well what else might we need so we decided some more 10 litre these are actually 11 litre tubs for passivate and for a rinsing and things like that these are only a few quid from a local, uh, you know, all sorts type of store. We also thought things like the activator and the passivate need to be at a certain temperature. So <coughs> we bought a couple of aquarium heaters so that we've got them going as well. One of the recommendations for hanging your pieces into it was to make a, a bar which we've made out of uh, copper piping and it was strongly recommended that you use clothes pegs to hold your wires on. Now we think we're ready to go now to get our first lot of plating done. First things first though we need to make up the other mixes we've got to make up the cleaner, the activator and some passivate using the water and then we'll be ready to go. That's the mixes made up to spec. We've got alkaline cleaner, yeah, 10 litres. That's basically just a, a final degreaser. We've got the acid, dry acid salts, yeah, that's an acid dip. It takes the final bit of corrosion off whatever it is you're plating as a preparation, an activator before you actually plate. That's the electrolyte, it was made up with um, nickel and zinc and you know whatever, we made that last week. Now this one's interesting because the bottles were labelled yellow passivate and we want to do yellow passivate but it looks a blue colour which may be right but I'm sure I've seen yellow with some other people that have been doing this. So we've got the mixes right, we need some water for rinsing, we'll put that into a container as well. Now this this and this all need to be warm so we've got heaters in the kit we got one heater which was basically for that one that one's the one that definitely needs to be i think at about 30 degrees centigrade the other two it does say which is the passivate and the uh, dry acid dip they should be at 20 degrees or perhaps a little bit more so we bought two extra heaters to do that because we're in england and it's chilly Right, I'm going to put the heaters in, we'll leave it to warm up, that one needs agitating and you know we can get a bit agitated here and there but we're going to use the water pump that came with it. That's everything heated up and getting agitated. Next thing I need to do is to sort my anodes out. I already have put a wire around to put the anodes onto and put some wires to hook them onto. These need to come out every time you finish and need to be cleaned because otherwise they have a chemical reaction with the, the electrolyte that just keeps going and you don't want that to happen. So I've got four zinc and two nickel. These are going to be my first trial pieces. Uh, my son, who's 
redoing his E30 or he's doing a E30 project has some parts from the suspension that uh, he's sandblasted, whizzy wheeled, degreased and prepared very well. Now apparently it's like painting with this. The preparation is key. If you haven't got nice shiny so, um, smooth pieces when you plate them they come out as not nice shiny or smooth so with these it's not quite so important for them to be smooth but they do need to be absolutely clean of grease right so the next part for getting these ready for plating is I'm going to hang them on copper wire from this copper pipe that I've prepared I'm going to use clothes pegs so that the wire that they're hanging from has got a really good contact on here because the way the plating works is electricity goes into the anode, so I believe, through the electrolyte, taking some of the bits of metal from the anode. This acts as a cathode, comes into here, leaving a bit of metal on the outside, up the wire, and then back to your electric gizmo. So let's get them prepared. I've allowed everything some time to get up to temperature now and I'm pretty confident that they're as hot as they're going to get. Um, I've sorted out two rinse buckets. This one is so that it can come out the cleaner into here, then the activator into here, and then initially when it comes out of the electrolyte into that one. Then it's going to go into the passivate and then after the passive it, it needs to have clean water again so I believe so I've got one for that so hopefully I'm set up and ready to go first step is into the alkaline wash this is a cleaner and degreaser final degreasing give it a rinse after this And then into the acid dip and it does say 30 seconds to a minute so let's give it a minute And now into the electrolyte. In the instructions, it says the voltage should be between 0.8 and 5, and that the amps should be 0.1 per square inch of surface area. Now I think the surface area of these is about 10 inches, so that gives me about one amp. But with the controls here, if I put it at one amp, or thereabouts, it gives me 0.3 of a volt. Well, I'm gonna go with the amps. I'm not gonna worry about the voltage for, for now. And I'm gonna leave it at one amp and see how it works out. We're at 11 minutes. Having looked further at the instructions in another place, it does say 0.2, not 0.8 of a volt, so that looks okay. It seems that the amps are the important bit. Let's see what's happening. Now looking at the wires, they are definitely getting a plating. And it does look fairly clean. I can see a couple of issues though, but we'll have a look at that when we finish. It's coming up to 20 minutes, so let's have a quick look. Oh, I think they're looking pretty good actually. Quite impressed. I think what we're going to do is give them another 5 minutes and then we'll go on to the 
next part of the process. Right, that's the 25 minutes. So, into the rinse. Now apparently, how long you have it in the pacifate is what colour you get. And the shorter the time, <coughs> the more of the colour it might be. Now, this is supposed to be yellow, and it says between 30 and 90 seconds. I'm going to go with 40 and see what happens. You take it straight out and straight into clean water to rinse it off. So, I'll set my stopwatch. Boom. And we're in. Now it did say, don't let it stay still in the passive out. That's 30 seconds. And that's the 40 seconds. Hey, it's bloody yellow. Who'd have thought it? I'm actually quite impressed with that. Now, you've not got to touch them, you've got to allow them to dry naturally or with a little bit of heat and leave them for 48 hours. So I've got this handy little rail, special uh, passivate rail that we've uh, managed to acquire. I'm going to hang them on here and leave them alone. That seemed reasonably good. Let's have a go at cooking the second lot. I'm quite pleased with the results. They are a bit mixed. I mean, most of them, I mean, from a corrosion point of view, I think they're going to be fine. They're not quite as pretty as some that I've seen. And I need to get a bit more experience with the kit before I'm fully, you know, conversant with why I've got problems. I think that maybe with these longer bolts that don't seem to have taken it as well as the nuts, 
I think maybe should have hung them from two points or maybe done them for longer. I'll experiment with that next time. But I think overall, it's a great process. I'm really pleased that I'm having a go at it. I really liked the idea of doing the, the bigger castings and things like that, because I think that'd be really useful. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, do subscribe. Um, give us a thumbs up if, you, if you'd like to, and we've got other projects that uh, should catch your interest. Thank you very much for watching.